How's it going, everybody? It's your friendly neighborhood music enthusiast, collector, consumer, musician, whatever you want to call me. It's Eric Nigma here with another video of the new additions to my vinyl collection. You know, this is only like a little bit of it that you can see, but if you've been watching my videos, you've seen more. Uh, first off, Excuse the fan sound, it's warm. All right, it's getting a little warm up in here. I don't wanna be busting out sweat and stuff on the camera. That that noise is, is my fan, which is uh, this, yeah. Cause it's kinda of hot, it's a little hot. Oh, um, I uh, have a lot of vinyl I need to get through here, yeah. And uh, we'll be doing this in like basically in two parts or two different vinyl edition videos because I have a lot of shit coming uh, and I have a lot of shit to show. But, um, and I don't want to make another video like my last one where it's just 40 minutes of me rambling on about records. Who really gives a shit, you know, other than me, maybe some of you, one of you, whoever. Thank you for watching anyway. But, um, yeah, we're really going to get into it. But first, um, package. Yes, a few packages here that I just got today that I want to get into. Bust them open. And I want to. I want to show. I want to see what they are. Show them to you, along with uh, some of the stuff that I've been uh, getting uh, over the last few months uh, that I haven't had a chance to get in the video. So, yeah, we're gonna bust into these first. And then we're gonna go through a few of these, All right? So yeah, let's go. All right, so let's bust into this one. I know what both of these are, so it's like no guess or question what they are. Just been waiting on them to come, man. Really looking forward to getting these records. So, uh, I love these records. This one. For sure. For all my thrash fans out there, man. Oh, that's right. Bonded by blood. Yeah. In my opinion, the fifth, the fifth band to the big four uh, of thrash, Exodus. This is um. Is it their is it their first album? I don't know if it's their first album. But um, it's it's definitely my favorite. Brash that I grew up on was the Big Four, you know. So anything else Brash that was out there, I got into later on in life. Like honestly, over the last probably decade, um, you know, Exodus, Testament, um. Overkill, Creator, Annihilator, um, just oh, recently have been getting into, you know, Rigor Mortis, um, Violence, you know, uh, bands like that, you know, I, I, I've, you know, I'm, 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 I'm getting deeper into thrash the same way I, I've been getting deeper into death metal and black metal lately, just been really on a metal kick for the last two years well, a few years probably a longer though it's just really been ramping up and um yeah man but I, I i i've always known about the big four of thrash i just never dug it never just had the, the interest to dig deeper and um exodus is definitely one of the first bands that i was just like yeah uh i'm digging this shit i need more yeah and bonded by blood bonded by blood was that first record that um, I just loved. That wasn't Metallica, that wasn't Slayer, that wasn't Anthrax, that wasn't Megadeth. It was just thrash. Um, just heavy fucking thrash. I, I love these, you know, these kind of like um, collages of the artists, you know, in the era of the record, you know, and like stuff of like 
show posters and and uh, flyers and stuff like that from that time. You know, I love that kind of stuff. What I don't love is badly printed shit like this. Like, hey, okay, you see the twins? You see the? You see the the evil? You see the the twins here? The conjoined twins here that are bonded by blood. Um, but then you you see. There's half one here, and it looks like it's going to the other one, and then, nope, 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 just half. <laughs> I, I don't like that. I think that's a bit bad. Um, I don't know if that's on purpose, but yeah, I, I'm not a fan of that. I would think it was supposed to be something kind of like Born to Run, like how Born to Run is by Bruce Springsteen, and how it's him and Clarence. On the on the on the full cover, even when you open the gate fold wide, it's like you know, both of them back to back. It's the full thing, like something like that. But nope, it's it's just yeah, mm, not feeling that. But whatever, man. Uh, I, this is one of my favorite um, thrash metal album covers. I just love the blue and the red, just pop popping, man. Typically, thrash is like black, dark, and all that shit. But yeah, no. I do like the cover of Injustice for All, but it's not my favorite Metallica album. Um, I would say Ride the Lightning is a better co uh, cover. Um, Rain and Blood uh, uh, and Seasons of the Abyss are some pretty good cover covers as well. Um, Anthrax, Fistful of Metal. That's a good one too. Um, oh my god! Uh, uh, I mean, Among the Living is pre is a pretty good one too. Um, Spread of Disease. That's a good one. Anthrax has a lot of their has some of the, the probably the most consistent best um, album covers of the of the thrash band. Uh, Megadeth, you know, with a uh, thick row head, it's pretty good too. You know, P cells, you know. Uh, <laughs> What else would be a uh, rest in peace? Yeah, those are good as well. Overkill's got some pretty good ones too. Testament 2 has some pretty good ones, but this is one of my favorite covers. Um, but let's get to the record. Let's get to the record, okay? Check it out. It's almost like blood red. Is it blood red? Translucent red with black swirls. So it's kind of blood red, but not really. Uh, I can't wait to listen to this. Glad I have this now. I got some more thrash in my collection. So I need that. Uh, yeah. Some of my favorite songs on here too. Uh, Mel Command. I'll, I'll listen to Violence. The title track, of course, I would say Bonded by Blood. You know, it's one of my favorites as well. Um, the Exodus track as well. I like pretty much all of Side A. You can see what Side A is. Um, yeah, didn't deliver us from evil. It's good too. Um, Strike of the Beast is good as well. This is a really good album, man. If you haven't heard it, uh, Bonded by Blood by Exodus, um, please give it a listen. It's a classic. It's it's a thrash classic. Just a heavy metal classic in general, man, regardless of the genre it falls in. For real. Next package we're going to open here is from a band that I was fairly new to last year, but got into them at the right time, right before this album dropped. Um, this album came out last year and I kind of went back and forth on if I wanted to get it or not, but I ended up liking the, the record after a few listens. Didn't like it at first, didn't hate it, still good, but you know, just wasn't, just to, didn't hear anything that really stuck with me. And then I gave it another listen and then another listen and it grew on me. And I was just like, damn, I wish I would have pre-ordered it or, uh, you know, or, or still had a chance to get it. And because it was sold out by the time I, I, I liked it. Well, the band uh, re, uh, um, got some more copies of it on their band camp and were, you know, made a limited amount and signed them and I got me one. I got me one 
just in time. And that band and album is Imperial Triumphant Alphaville. Yeah. This was easily one of the best records of 2020. Uh, one of the best metal albums of 2020. One of the best black metal albums of 2020. Imperial Triumphant. Um, they are a three-piece experimental, maybe avant-garde, black metal band. Um, they incorporate elements of black metal and jazz uh, in, in, into their music. Some, and some other elements as well from other genres as well. But most predominantly black metal and bits of jazz. Um, that's the most consistent thing you will hear in their music. Um, and I like their previous releases. Uh, as I was getting into this band, this is when I first found out about them because I'm a sucker for a band with a good image and this is the band and I was like, I definitely want to hear what these guys sound like. And they sound good. I love experimental shit. You know, especially when you experiment with black metal because black metal is, you can either go to the roots of it or you can do something new with it. Like, uh, I butcher their name sometimes, Blutas. Nord, or even Liturgy, which I know a lot of people or a lot of black male fans are just like blasphemous about, but I feel like they're doing the most black male thing you can do in black male nowadays, which is make some kind of opposite black male, some white black male or whatever. Um, you know, but like Blue Dust Nord, Liturgy, uh, kind of what Yasan is doing, you know, but you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for any black male that tries to do something different. You know, Death Heaven is another one as well. Typically one that everyone would say. But yeah, Imperial Triumphant, man. This record, loved it. Um, I believe this is just black. Yeah, it's just black. Just black. But here's their autographs. They signed it, which was awesome. Thanks to them. Um, something in here. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah. Lyrics stuff. So, yeah. Alphaville is really good. Took me a minute um, to get into it. Uh, it wasn't, again, wasn't because it was bad or anything. It was just basically, you know, I, I felt like I hadn't really heard anything new that I heard from their previous records. But, um, that was false. Listened to it some more. And clicked on me by that third listen. That third listen is typically the, the most important one, but yeah. Check this record out, Imperial Triumphant, Alphaville, great band. All right, let's actually get through this stack here, finally. Okay, so first record we're going to get through is Mudvayne's LD50, yeah. New metal, you fuckers. Yeah, I know you hated that. But yeah, man. Um, for those who don't know, new metal was my gateway into just heavy metal in general. Um, as much as some people or many people may despise new metal and its run and its existence as a whole, um, I, if it wasn't for new metal, man, I wouldn't have gotten into bands like Metallica and Iron Maiden and, you know, shit nowadays like Cannibal Corpse and Behemoth, you know? So, you know, I mean, I saw Behemoth for the first time a couple years ago going to see Slipknot. They opened for Slipknot and I became a Behemoth fan that day. So, yeah, new metal. It's metal. And it fucking rocks for some of us, a lot of us now, uh, because yeah, now there's kind of there's been a big new metal resurgence. There's a lot of bands coming up nowadays that are um, in, pretty much influenced by new metal. One of them, I believe, is in this um, pile over here. Yeah, man, Revolver Magazine. Uh, they they have a pretty nice. A uh, collection of vinyl records up on their store for sale, and I've just been buying them back to back to back because they've been just putting up some of my favorites. 
Um, and this was one, man. LD50 by Mudvayne. Yeah, this is one of my favorite um, new metal era records. Really, this is more like a math metal or like experimental alternative metal kind of record um, because, yeah, they might have the groove and the, the sound of what new metal was doing at the time, but like really wasn't, they weren't really rapping. They weren't really, there wasn't like turntables or like hip hop elements really involved. Like, like this was really just, like new metal essentially was like, it was rap metal and then it was like alt metal, alternative metal. So it was, it was kind of stuff like, you know, you know like typo negative and cold chamber, you know, and disturbed. You know, we're in the kind of the alt metal side of it. You know, even though some would say typo was was you know um, more goth metal, you know, or doom metal. You know, but you know, you had you had you know at least disturbed and cold chamber. You know, the seven dust in the alt metal side of it, and then you had bands like Corn and Limp Biscuit. And Slipknot, they actually had like a DJ or were actually trying to incorporate hip hop elements mixed into their metal. And Mudvayne to me was more on the alt metal side. Um, there's some electronic elements on here, you know, they kind of would um, make it lean kind of in between both sides of it. But I mean, that was the thing a lot of bands were doing that, like Disturb was doing that, Stack X was doing that. You know, um, you know, Orgy, if you remember Orgy, they were doing that as well. So, you know, this is, this is new metal adjacent because of the time it came out in and because they were one of those bands that had a specific look, especially during this era. But um, really, this is more of a kind of math, rock, math metal, um, ooh, starting to rip the scene, kind of record um avant-garde i don't know it's, it's very they, they were mud pain was such a unique band man like on top of just their imagery they were just really good players like they were really technical um ryan martiny man um he's he's like one of my favorite bass players honestly um he's arguably probably one of the if not the best bass player uh, from that era, on um, you know, for real. I mean, look, oh my god, this gatefold is awesome, dude. Holy shit, it's them, it's them with the makeup. It's fucking awesome. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. But yeah, Ryan Martiny, you know, that's the uh. That's the look behind the meme, you know. Boom, boom, ding, boom, boom, ding. But yeah, Mudvayne was one of the bands that were um, very underrated. They were, they were technical. They were, they were good songwriters too. Like you know, like Chad, Chad Gray um, was, was a really good songwriter. You know, and then the rest of the band are really good players. So, you know, like, yeah, man, they could have been bigger. I don't know why they weren't, but yeah, they could have, they could have done it, man. They really could have. This, this is dope. Yeah. If you never got into Mudvayne, but you remember Mudvayne, um, this is definitely the album to check out. Like, this was a really hell of an album, hell of a debut album. Um, and yeah, man, don't don't let the new metal, you know, shit, fully, man. This is they had there were some there were some really good records that came out during that era from some of those bands. All right, some of those bands are really talented, really slept on. Mudvayne, definitely one you need to check out if you. Have. So as we talk about bands that were uh, inspired by New Bell, here's a band that uh, basically kind of is loathed. I let it in and it took everything. This record is a beast. 
Um, this is one of the best records that came out last year in 2020. Love, they're an English band. Their sound is pretty much metalcore. Um, but this record, man, they start to incorporate some of those like dreamy, kind of shoegazy, um, soft alternative moments um, that like Deftones really made a name for themselves with. Um, this is a very Deftones inspired record. There's a lot of bands coming out lately um, that are inspired by Deftones. And me being a huge Deftones fan, I love it. I love it. So, you know, as soon as I heard this record and I got what they was doing, I was just like, oh yeah, this this is my shit now. This is my shit. Um, this band really has blown up over oh, uh, since this record's release. Um, they released a new album um, recently. It's called The Things They Believe. Um, and it's completely different from this record. Um, that record is ambient. It's damn near something you can listen to whether you want to, while you're meditating or whether you're trying to go to sleep. Uh, it's, it's a very smart idea for a release um, coming off of this record. You know, whereas this record is just a killer banger record. Um, the new one that just came out this year, uh, which is companion piece to this, um, the things that, the things they believe, um, is the complete opposite. It's more somber. It's more relaxing. Um, you know, it's just straight ambient. Uh, and it's definitely something that feels like maybe like Deftones will have done. Uh, and again, this this band is one to look for, man. This one, this band is one to to watch for sure. This is supposed to be gold vinyl. I don't know how that looks. Black and gold vinyl. Yeah. Like that. Interesting. We'll see how it sounds. Hopefully it sounds good. It's the most important thing. But yeah. Um, get into low before um, you are just... Until you're, you're just like too late to the game, man. Don't want to be late to the game, man. Uh, next record is a classic it's just a classic record one of my favorite records of all time <sighs> Pearl Jam 10 10 10 for my wrestling fans if you get that reference this is Pearl Jam's debut album in case you didn't know um, and yeah man this is this is just a classic it's a classic um, grunge record uh, which is even weird to say because my opinion on grunge has changed completely uh, as it being a genre but um, this is just a great record it's just a great fucking record man uh, I listened to this record years ago for the first time after watching the Pearl Jam 20 documentary um, and yeah, knowing knowing the hits, knowing all Pearl Jam's hits, but never actually listening to a full album by them. And man, this one hit me, man. Fucking once all the way to release. Um, once, what a hell of an opener. Even Flow grew up on that song. Um, Alive, you know, know that, of course. Uh, Black is the shit. Jeremy. Jeremy's one of my favorite songs of all time, uh, easily. Um, easily my favorite Pearl Jam song, without question. Um, Porch is really good, Garden is good as well, but Release, man. Release sealed the deal for me. Release sealed the deal for me. What a beautiful, emotional song, you know, and just a strong opener with once, and a, just a strong, if not stronger, closer, with release, man. This is one of my favorite records ever. And I got this at fucking Target. Got it at Target. Yeah, man. So don't sleep on Target if you just want to, you know, just want to, you know, just want to, you know, curious to see what they got. You know, they have a vinyl section now. And uh, it's not bad, man. It really is. On purple vinyl, baby. What? Purple vinyl? Pearl Jam's 10 on purple vinyl? That's right. Believe it, man. Yeah. 
If you if you haven't heard Ten by Pearl Jam, please go fix that. Please do. Next record we have is from a fresher, newer band from around the way. They're from uh, Dumfries, Virginia, I think. I might be wrong. They're, they're at least from Virginia. But um, it's a band called Pulses. This is um, the, uh, an album they put out last year called Speak It Into Existence. Um, and yeah, man, this is for definitely for people who fuck with like that kind of post-hardcore kind of alternative emo blend, um, uh, you know, with jingly guitar kind of sound, you know, some, something sort of like dance, Gavin dance, um, but also like people that might like something like title fight maybe as well, um. You know, Pulse is, is just a really fucking dope band. Um, definitely recommend you check them out if you like anything I just said that kind of describes their shaft. Yeah, this is on screen vinyl, baby. Look at that. Mwah. They made it like candy. I want some. Mm. I'm weird. <laughs> Pulse is speaking into existence. Check that shit out. It's a really good record. And the last record I'm gonna touch on for this video is a record I've been definitely meaning to get for a while. Um, it's one of my personal favorite records because this dude is one of my favorite artists. Like, uh, I've, I've shown, I've, I've, I've covered one of his records on vinyl in a video before. And uh, I, I said then, and I'll say it again now, man, I've been following the dudes from damn near the beginning of his career, taking off to his, you know, last day here on earth, to, you know, the end of his career, um, his unfortunate passing. And that is Mac Miller and quite possibly uh, my personal favorite record of his entire catalog, which is the Divine Feminine. If uh, I said before, when I got the, um, I got his album Kids, his mixtape Kids, which was the um, project of his that got me into him. Um, I got, when I got down vinyl, man, so I've been a fan of him for a minute um, since pretty much that record dropped. And yeah, man, uh, I, I love a lot of stuff. Kids, Best Day Ever is dope. Macadelic is dope. Um, I like Blue Side Park, you know, uh, watching movies with the sound off is probably um, my second favorite album of his. Uh, good Morning, uh, uh, Good Morning or Good AM, uh, not bad, it's good, not bad, it's good, but when this came out, man, I was just like, all right, Malcolm, this is what the fuck we're talking about, yeah, man. Him bringing in like some jazzy, smooth, soulful kind of production. You know, he was dating Ari on the Grande. So, you know, this was kind of low key to out an album, you know, dedicated to her. Um, kinda. Uh, I don't know if that's her or not, but she, she is on the album, I believe. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think she, yeah, she, she, I think she, yeah, she is on the album. Um, but yeah, man, there's some. Some of my favorite songs by Mac, man. Uh, some of the, some of the best work I think he's done. You know, I mean, you know, um, this this though, this this is one to to really cherish uh, of his of his catalog, man. Um, yeah, I'm trying to see some of my favorite songs on here. Um, you know. Cinderella is really good, um, especially that beat switch, um, or when that beat comes in, kind of halfway in. Cinderella is really good. Um, Congratulations, Dang is really good. Um, I think Dang is the one with Anderson Pack on it um, as well. But um, God is fair, sexy, nasty, with Kendrick Lamar on it, man. That is my that's my favorite track. That might be like damn near my favorite um, Mac Miller song. 
Spotify favorites. I mean, it's definitely one of them, if not my favorite. But like, that is such a great ass track. Great clothes. I love the beat. Ken what Kendrick did on it. Max smooth flowing on man. God damn, love this record, man. The Divine Feminine by Mac Miller. If you are not familiar with it, um, if you're trying to get into Mac Miller, trying to trying to see what the what the hype was about the dude. Um, I would definitely say this is definitely a crucial listen to his catalog, in his catalog because um, uh, this was one of the best things he had put out at the time. And I, I will definitely say that Swimming in Circles were definitely uh, improvements upon this. It's just nothing from those records really caught my ear so, as, as much as this did. Um, and yeah, this is why this is a very special one for me to have now in my collection but that's it for this video i want to keep going on and on with all these records the video will be too damn long so yeah just do the things as you normally do on the youtubes we they tell you to do which is you know like comment subscribe do that shit share it if you want to uh if you know anyone who cares but yeah man um and that's it, man. Are any of these records in the comment section? You know, let me know. Any of these records, something, you know, records that you're familiar with, artists you're familiar with, you know, let's talk about them in the comments, man. What do you think about Mac Miller? What do you think about Imperial Triumphant, Exodus, uh, Mudvayne, you know, any of these bands, any of these artists, loads. Like, let's talk about them in the comments. And just remember, I'm Eric Nick because you are. That's okay. It's okay. That's all you need to know. Peace out.